Signing Day Central. What a terrific day for Coach Bob Diaco's football program. 22 young men declaring their intent to come and play for you. It's kind of like Christmas Day for you and the coaches, it, isn't it? You know, any, any time you, you can add to your family is a great, it's a great day. I mean, if you, you know, you got cousins, you got nephews, you got nieces, you got children yourself, and, and that day when somebody gets added to your family is, is the greatest life moments. I mean, the, the, the quality of your life is about the quality of the relationships, and, and to have a chance to have 22 more is awesome. We saw the video of when you walked in this morning, bright and early, here at the Burton Family Football Complex, and you always have a little pep in your step, but it looked like you had a little more today <laughs> in the anticipation of what was taking place. Either that or you were hurrying to get in from out of the court. No, 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 maybe a little bit of both. <laughs> no, it's an exciting day. It's a, you, can, you know, it's the kind of day where you, you don't sleep the night before and, and you just can't wait, you're excited. You, a lot of work has gone in by the staff um, and the team. This isn't, this isn't a Bob Diaco thing. This, this football staff and this football team the, 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 the guys in the locker room right now. They've been working hard. Everybody's been working hard to put this group together. Yeah, let's talk a little bit about <laughs> that, Coach, because when the players come on their recruiting visits, they spend a lot of time with the current players. Correct. And obviously the message got out from the players who are returning that this is a program that these 22 players who, you jo who joined your family yeah. today want to be part of. And the honest, Joe, the honest message. That's what we tell the guys. Just be honest. And the players are going to be honest with each other anyway. Um, but they're the best people to articulate the model. Because I'm reluctant to say they're the best salesmen because we're not interested in selling. We want the, the players to present to the, to the PSAs, the prospective student athletes, who we are, who our university is, who our football team is, who our coaches are. Right. Because if they want to come after that, then they're the right guys. And if they don't, that's fine too. They shouldn't be here. When the first uh, letters started coming in, What's the reaction like in the in kind of the war room there? It's just like a final um, exhale, sigh, kind of relief. Like, okay, it's official now, um, and, and just kind of a, a moment of celebration for them and and for our family. You recruited a lot of size with this class in all different positions. When you're looking to make the model UConn football team, Bob. What, what physical characteristics are most important, knowing that in their time here with strength and conditioning coach Matt Ballas, they're all going to get bigger, stronger, faster? Yeah, no, there's no doubt. And when you talk about the model, you know, I don't, I, I don't in any way want to present anything disparaging on, on the team that we have. No, of course we not. We love the team that we have. The 2015 team is going to be comprised of the guys that are in that locker room training right now. Um, but moving forward and the guys that we add, uh, we believe that if we have a big football team, yeah, we're gonna have a good football team. Right. I mean, if it, when you're just talking about tangible, the predominant characteristics of this group are intangible. They're actually not tangible. But then when you move to the tangible, you asked about the tangible. The players are gonna be big. So um, if they're if they're six six and three hundred and ten pounds and run, uh, uh, you know, a, a four eight five or a five nine a four nine five, then that player might be uh, a five star who's being coveted by Alabama and USC and, and Florida State. But there's a bunch of guys that are 6'5", six 6'6", six six that are maybe 240 pounds that run a 4'8", or 4'9", or 5". The same parameters, just not quite developed to that point yet. Those require work. Those require that evaluation. And, and those are the guys, those are the diamonds in the rough that they're right at the front of who they're going to be. They're just a piece of clay ready to be molded into something spectacular. And that's what that class looks like. And you've certainly gone out and recruited the United States, 11 different states, 10 states in the District in Columbia, and Canada, which has always been a, 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 had a place in UConn's heart. Can you just talk about, Bob, and when you and the assistants go out and you're looking for talent and how important it is to get the word of UConn football out there. Absolutely. And, and like we talked about when we first met, I, I described to UConn country, um, and in particular our season ticket holders, uh, what our recruiting model is going to be. I was just frank and honest and, and laid it out there. And now you had a chance to see it come into full scope where, where the, the American Conference is a national conference. It's a national footprint. So we need to be able to go into these major metro cities that play American Conference football games with American Conference universities and beat them on players in their home turf. Right. Um, and then also, you know, do a dynamic job in our main footprint, and Connecticut in particular. 
Um, and the future's bright for Connecticut, actually. 2016 is going to be a strong year. All right, let's talk about some of the players here. Now, one's already here. Um, your uh, the quarterback, Tyler Davis, Tyler. was the uh, came in in January. How has he grown since he's been here, and how excited is he to take part in what's going to happen here? Very excited. Um, I didn't want to put too much pressure on him. The team's not putting too much pressure on him. The team is, is embraced him. They're, we're allowing him to grow up. You know, it, th that, that needs a lot of care. It doesn't matter who it is. That, that dynamic cannot get overlooked one day by the team, the support staff, the coaching staff, anyone that touches Tyler's life. The fact of the matter is he was in high school math last week, and now he's in college math. It's a big he difference. Was, it's a big difference. <laughs> he was in a high school schedule last week where you show up, you go to homeroom, you get checked in, and you walk through the halls, and you do that until 2.30, and then you go to the bus. This is a different deal. You might not have a class. You might have three classes on Tuesday and nothing on Wednesday or four classes on Wednesday and nothing on Friday. But you've got to manage your time appropriately. So when you have a transition time of months, it, it works out. Right. right now, like I said, a few weeks ago he was in high school history. Now he's in college you know, history at one of the finest institutions in the country. So um, just that piece uh, requires a lot of care. He's doing a great job. He's working hard. He's in with the guys. They're training hard in the weight room. Um, he's a big, fast, strong guy that can change direction. All those pieces that we had anticipated to be true are actually true. Um, and, and manage it, and he's gelling nicely with the team. One group that really came on last year during the season was wide receivers. Your young wide receivers improved as the year went out. Now, we've lost two veterans in Jeremy and Deshaun, but you've replenished that position with five players, including a couple big kids, six foot six wide receivers. Yeah, listen, you know, I believe, and honestly, and anybody could call me right now, and I've said this almost about the whole group. I could get a phone call from some of the top rated coaches in America right now, and if they wanted to trade their signing class from, for our signing class, I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't do it. And the wide receiver position in particular. Right. Um, you're talking about uh, the player of the year, one of the top performers um, in the state of New Jersey. You have the spectacular um, player in, in, in Hergy. And then when you look at specifically our red zone production, mm -hmm. which has been a major issue and point of contention in this offseason, we're looking for guys that are going to be able to produce points down there. And we've got two, for sure, major matchup issues. We throw a top shelf ball. Yeah. You well, I a saw a top-shelf ball, and that player high points it. How are you going to defend him? I saw the tape on Frank Battle while we were doing a couple of our segments. He's a kid who can get up and get the ball. He's not even the tallest wide receiver that you're bringing yeah, in. And Aaron. Yeah. I mean, you, you know, you have Aaron and, and you have Frank, and, and, and it's not like you can roll to one side. You get down there in the low red, you got one on either side. they got a problem. So I don't know how big their corners are, but even some of these lists of of signy corners at some of the top institutions in the country are going to have a hard time uh, dealing with our two wide receivers down there in the low red. Tight end, you bring players back, but you replenish the shelves with three tight ends who go 6'5", six, 6'6", six, six, and 6'7". Six, yeah, and we love tight ends. We love tight ends. Well, because that's part of the yeah. philosophy of what you want to and do. One, and one of, them, one of them, you know, there's some small nuances in there that are fun and exciting, like, like – one, one of the players was a two, is the two-time Northeast grappling champion. <laughs> but the size of tight end is, 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 pretty, is pretty impressive. They're big guys. They're tough guys. They're athletic guys. They're multi-sport athletes. I mean, they're exactly what we want. You know, we're, we're excited about playing with, with two tight ends, with three tight ends, you know, with, with multiple tight ends. Um, and that's the kind of football we like to play, and, and, and we're getting the guys to do it. Offensive line uh, progressed last year from beginning to end. You bring a couple of guys in, and from the size, especially Brian Cespedes, the, the kid from New London High School, kids who, who have big frames but have chances to grow. Exactly. Well, I mean, when you look at our, our greatest strength, it's development. We have teachers here. We have teachers. We have a dynamic sports performance team. We have a strong infrastructure. We've got an athletic director that is all about the athletes and giving them the things they need to be successful. And because of those elements, you can take players that are going to be developmental and develop them if you can develop them. Right. Because they show the intangible. Every one of those guys has the intangible traits to develop. Because what prevents develop, would, development would be a, 
a, a culture that doesn't focus on it or can't do it and or limitations, we call them two limitations with the player. So we don't have any guys that are developmental that have those limitations. Each guy's gonna be able to physically develop and we have the in infrastructure to get it done. Talking with UConn football coach Bob Diaco here on signing day. Just a great day for the UConn football program. I want to start with the defense, with the, with the player who one of your coaches told me makes Mike Myers look small. That's Trey Blackwell, the defensive tackle out of Egg Harbor City, New Jersey. 6'2 and a brisk 323. Yeah, he is a big boy. <laughs> He's awesome. We, we uh, had a great visit with his family, and, and uh, they're great, great people. And there's a lot of love in that house. Um, great interactions with, uh, with siblings. His sister's a dynamic basketball player. Um, so so he, he's just a great guy, a family guy, a tough guy, um, and he's got the body size to anchor um, that A to A space. Right. And, and, you know, I don't want to minimize him and his ability, but, you know, we call them space eaters. That's a good. So, you know, if, if you could, if you could sit a, if you could sit a, a Volkswagen down in there and, and just kind of put it in park and put the parking brake on, <laughs> you got it. You, you're, you're halfway home. Um, when you look at defensive ends and outside linebackers, mm -hmm. Bob, are you looking at them in the scheme that you play to kind of be interchangeable? No, not, not really. Not the defensive ends. Okay. No, we're really not. Um, the positions are mirrored, so that's interchangeable. Right. Like the right defensive end could be the left defensive end. The left defensive end could be the right defensive end. The outside linebacker on the right could be the outside linebacker on the left. Those positions are mirrored. Right. But we really, we really don't want the model to be interchangeable between defensive end and outside linebacker. That should be hard. That should be hard to do. It should okay. be, those jobs should be hard for the defensive end to get done, and it should be hard for the outside backer to be, do the defensive end jobs when we're really cooking. Now, we have some guys that are working it out and doing a great job with it, um, but as we get this thing rolling, they'll all look very different. And, again... Size on the defensive ends. Connor Freeborn is is six foot six. Uh, Felipe Okunam uh, is six foot five. Dallas Parker is six foot five. Right, and those are written as defensive ends there. But Dallas may be more suited to be an outside linebacker. Connor may be more suited to be an outside linebacker. Connor might be more suited to be a tight end. Right. You know when you when you when you and I've talked about all these players this way, so I don't mind saying it because I didn't misrepresented anything. We recruit power, big skill, and skill. Okay, and the power positions represent the offensive line and the defensive line. The big skill positions represent the outside linebackers, the inside linebackers, the fullbacks, and the quarterbacks. And the skill positions represent the tailbacks, the, uh, the, 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 the wide receivers, and the defensive backs. So when you take those players, they're going to come here, they're going to play what they want to play. But in, more, in many cases, they might want to play something else. Right. They might be better suited to serve the team in another position. And it's normally, when you you know, recruit the right guys, it nor normally happens naturally. Like you're, 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 you're interested in a wide receiver moving over to corner, they're already interested in moving over to corner. <laughs> you know, that line's really long, that line's really short, you know, and, and I feel like I can um, be a star here, you know, as opposed to just a, a, a traveling participant here. So that, that all works itself out, exactly what jobs these guys are going to do. And you bring in a kicker from Buffalo and Michael Tarbutt, who's got a 60-yard high school field goal, too. So yeah, no, there's no doubt. And, and, um, and as we've said um, to everybody, you know, when you're ready, we're ready. Um, I'd like to think, I'm not going to poor mouth this thing, we laid, we, we laid the groundwork. I was honest. I've been honest for 12 months since I got here. I've been honest for 12 months. You ask me a question, I've answered it honestly. Now, not everybody's enjoyed that answer. But now it's time to start winning. And I mean that honestly. So to think that these guys are going to come in and be better than the guys that are on the team right now, I would be disappointed right. in our work that we've done over the last 12 months. I'd like to think the foundation that we've laid in the development process for our team right now, this 2015 locker room, is strong. And these guys are turning themselves into grown men, or at a minimum, young men. And to think that a high school young man slash kid would become here and displace somebody else, to me, would be disappointing. But you talked about the kicker. To me, if there's one guy closest 
to truly competing for a legitimate spot, it's Michael. We got a lot of good response from social media. Let's get to some of the questions. Shockingly, a couple of questions. Joe from Glastonbury, Jimmy from Enfield, both wanted to talk about the offensive okay. line. That's great. Uh, and Jimmy said, do you expect any of the new offensive linemen to make an immediate impact on the field? This I season? do not. I do not. When they're ready, we're ready. I'm not going to limit it. Right. I'm also not going to waste their time. I'm not interested in burning a year. I mean, we don't operate that way. I'm not going to have them just, you know, do some job, you know, and, and waste their time. But I, again, it's very hard to come in on offense and defensive line, um, no matter how good you are, and displace someone that's in the program training every day in a college atmosphere, if you're doing it the right way. Right. Our players now, our players now look very different than incoming freshmen, as they should. And, and on that theme, Brian Anderson from Enfield asks, looking at the big picture, how long will it take for these new signees to improve the overall on-field product? In general, what was his name again? His name is Brian. Brian, Brian. In general, Brian, uh, when you have a power position player, two things need to develop if you have a developmental power position player, which all of our players are developmental. One would be their skill. The other one would be their physical strength and conditioning. You cannot develop both simultaneously. So because they need development physically and with their skill, and they can't be both developed simultaneously, it's normally a two-year process. Um, also, Michael Smith from Manchester wants to know, okay. Coach, what is the biggest thing this new group of Huskies bring to the table? Oh, my gosh. They bring a culture. I mentioned the intangible piece more than the tangible piece. These guys are family guys. They have brothers and sisters, moms and dads. They understand respect. They understand family. They understand how to be a brother. They understand locker room. They understand how to communicate. These guys are off winning teams and part of winning programs. They understand a culture of winning. Every one of them loves football. We challenged them. We quizzed them. We questioned them. We grinded them. We constantly inspected and looked for a crack in terms of their love for football. And in the event there was one, we deleted them from the database. These guys love football. So um, the piece that they're going to add to this 2015 locker room as they join is as great brothers, as great teammates to, to, follow, to follow the players on the team right now and the culture we have set. And the last uh, note from Lou from East Haddam. When you recruit a class like this, how important is it for these incoming players to form their own kind of camaraderie as freshmen? It's very important. They're going to lean on each other. The times get hard. They get, you know, homesick. They get, uh, 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 you know, confused with class and, 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 and need help and, and information and sometimes a shoulder to cry on or, or a, 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 a voice to listen to or counsel. And any time you can build a stronger relationship um, with a teammate, the better. And, and the more you can do that, the better. And the more that they come in and they're strong together, the more that it will fortify the rest of our locker room. Right. Um, we've built a, a culture. As I've said, we, we have a culture built now. We really do. We have the floorboards laid in our foundation. Is the culture still very new? Yes. Is the culture fragile? Yes. Is the culture raw? Yes. This wave of, of what we would call RKGs is gonna, gonna crash onto this team and into this locker room and truly just push it another half click forward. Now this and they're is, already on their way. Sorry, sorry Joe. Uh, this is uh, for our season ticket holders, and we know that the season tickets aren't currently on sale. Correct. But it's important that when they do get on sale, people participate in this because it's important for these players to know the fan base is behind them. Yeah, listen, I, I, and everywhere I go, that's all I see. So, I mean, I small state, big heart. I mean, this state wants to be great at football and we're going to be great at football there's no doubt we are well on our way and it's going to start to show on the scoreboard how long I immediately immediately okay and and um and i understand i think that you know in, in my understanding the marketing team is is doing a fantastic right. job adding they're, great value they're trying to benefits. roll out they're right. trying to roll out these different benefits and different exclusive opportunities for our season ticket holders that have been just awesome so 
Um, we're preaching to the choir here. Obviously, everybody tuned into this right now is is uh, you got to give a little nudge once in a while. <laughs> not, not me. I'm not nudging. And well, I'm, I'm a good on it. I'm a nudge. Home games include uh, Army, Navy, and East Carolina. And season tickets will be on sale in the next few weeks. UConnHuskies.com and UConnTickets.com. And of course, last night, coach, a historic night for Gino Oriema, 900 wins. And tonight, we've got a couple of more sets of Husky teams, the men's basketball team and the men's ice hockey team uh, out in action. Yeah, no, that's great. And I want to wish the men's basketball team against East Carolina luck, and I want to wish the, the hockey team luck against Providence. And for sure, all those fans that are at both those games we want to see at the Brent. Yep, because nothing says UConn spirit more than a packed stadium. For the head coach of the Huskies, I'm Joe D'Ambrosio. Thanks for being with us here on Signing Day on UConnHuskies.com.